Hi, Dr. Arlen Hill here with Harvest Hills Ranch, and I'm excited today because I am here with Mr. Doug Winters of Trail of Faith Ranch, and I wanted to jump into a topic today, and that's going to be the misconceptions of Longhorns as good beef cattle. And first of all, let me preface this by saying that among just coming and visiting friends, being one of the reasons that we're here today, is that we're also here picking up some of your cattle to bring back yep. to Harvest Hills. And our primary focus with our cattle is beef production. So I thought, who better than to sit down and talk to the gentleman that we are purchasing some of our cattle from? And what is it that makes Longhorns a good option for a beef cattle? It's um, when Susie and I first got married back in 2011, we knew we wanted to get into cattle. And I had raised limousine before um, from grade school all the way through college and, and into my young adult life and uh, thought that's the way we would go. And I never cared for longhorns at all. It's crazy because I thought they were just an off stringy, that type of deal. So anyway, we started doing research on different things and even looked at doing miniature cattle for bucking stock for youth rodeos. And uh, just got to looking at longhorns and the more we read about them, the I guess you could say the more impressed we were by him and but you had to be very diligent in where you did your research on them because there are a, still a lot of them out there they're more of a novelty they're smaller framed not much beef um hate to say stringy but but i'm sure that's what the meat would be like but uh, if you find the right breeders where they're really putting on the beef uh it just just kind of hooked us, I guess you could say. So no pun intended. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we um, finally found a breeder. We knew we wanted to do some AIing to improve, and uh, we actually bought our first seven cows through a TLBAA Longhorn sale that they did every quarter over in West Texas, and. Um, uh, we, we found a breeder up in Ohio, Dickinson Cattle Company, that just had some amazing bulls. And um, and at that time, too, we knew we had it. We didn't, compared to what we have now, we had such limited knowledge, but we knew we wanted to go grass fed beef mm -hmm. just from all the health and everything that, that we'd read about. And um, so we picked his bulls um, to AI to uh, for the beef type. And we were very fortunate to have a beef type bull calf that we were able to use for the first three or four years in our program that just gave us some really good foundation cows. Um, but we were very nervous, I guess you could say, or anxious when we took our first two steers. We butchered two steers, our first butcher, after we raised them for a couple of years. And uh, we were not going to sell any of it until we ate it ourselves, mm -hmm. see what it tasted like. But uh, they were, they finished out very nice. Um, and when we got the meat and everything here to the house, we did one of every steak. And then we did some ground beef as well and cooked it for hamburgers. And it was all amazing, just completely amazing how good it tasted. And uh, we were so excited about it. And, and literally, we still do that to this day. Every time we butcher, we will still taste, mm -hmm. we will still cook steaks to make sure that it's up to snuff. So, um, but the coolest thing that in, in the research phase of it, one of the main reasons we went with the Longhorns is they're naturally lean from the survivalist lifestyle that they had to have for so many years. It's just kind of innate, it's, it's a part of them. And um, even though we still try to pack on as much fat as we can through the way we graze with the high density grazing and uh, through their grass, um, they will still put on fat, but even when we put on max fat and we don't, we don't cut any fat off, you know, but it'll still be, oh, you know, in our hamburger, it's probably like 85% on average, uh, lean. Um, and, and so we encourage everybody that buys our steaks, um, eat every bit of the fat brisket, no matter what meat you've got, eat every bit of the fat on it because it's really good for you. So, um, that was it's just been an amazing. The, the The longer we've had the Longhorns now, the more we're impressed with them and the more we enjoy them. It's amazing. And I think that's been our observation as well. 
Um, and and let me do, let me just do a couple of things here in summary because I really want to reiterate some of the things that you're saying about what what you've seen. And I also want to start out by saying I absolutely second your comments about the the taste and the quality of your meat. I mean we've tried we've tried the meat on numerous occasions now. We've tried uh, ground a couple of other ways that you've prepared it, and it has been nothing short of outstanding every time we've ever tried it. And I'm I'm absolutely not saying that because I'm sitting here with you. It it is the truth of what we feel about what we've what we've gotten from you yeah. and a lot of that had to do with just you mentioned this bull that you got from Ohio and you brought the genetics into the herd and you were really those genetics laid the foundation for getting more meat on these animals and so maybe that traditional mindset that people have about what a longhorn is and what a longhorn looks like that stereotypical image is not what's in your pasture and that's exactly. not what we're trying to emulate in our pastures either we're trying to actually you know just like you've done develop a cow who who has good beef production as a part of that yes and i think that you know when you when you look at you mentioned this too which i think is so important when you look at the system that that animal is raised under and how the grazing management, not just turning that animal out to pasture and letting them go kind of at will, but actually guiding them through the pasture and letting them have a part in regenerating the ground that they're feeding off of so that that ground then in turn provides nutrition back to them. The end product that comes from that is really second to none. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's just such an outstanding product. Yep. It really is, and a couple of things too. Um, there are, we're really not ranchers, we're, we're, we're grass farmers. Right. You know, and just the, the beef is the end product of all that. Um, but there are grazers out there that literally can, they, they have the intellect and, and, and the, the experience to where they can, they can butcher an animal almost any time of the year based off of what grass they're growing. Well but they'll also do a lot of seeding and stuff like that for your for your different seasons of grasses. For us, we're trying to stay as I don't I don't want to say it's more of a holistic approach where we don't seed, we don't plant. What we do is we take what nature gives us and and, and that's what we work with within that parameter. So, for us, we only butcher once a year, twice if we're lucky that's coming off the spring lush because it does take, it takes 90 days to flavor your beef. So we don't want to butcher something coming off of winter uh, forage or hay or anything like that. So we give them 90 days of this spring lush and we will butcher typically around the end of June, 1st of July. And then if we get the fall rains, that will give us that little grass lush there in the, in the late fall which we were lucky enough to have this past year, then we can butcher at that point as well. So that's another cool thing about longhorns is we always worry about carrying them too old. Well, if, if, if they're not really ready to butcher, say in June, do we really want to take them over a whole another 12 months and butcher them that following year? And it absolutely works. Uh, the, the longhorns will stay tender longer than most other breeds, um, which we have experienced personally. And uh, uh, that's really cool about the Longhorn as well. Yeah, I want to share a quick story on this just to your point right here. So last time we were up to visit you, Miss Susie made chili for us. And we got in. The, I had this same conversation about how long can you carry these Longhorns and at which point, you know, how at what age do you stop considering uh, butchering because you're worried about the tenderness of the meat? And you just kind of looked over at me and said, well, that chili you're eating seven-year-old longhorn. So how does it taste? Yeah. And it was pretty tender and pretty good. <laughs> so I th thought that spoke for itself. Yeah. So, but, you know, and, and thinking about what you're doing here, I mean, there's so many facets to what goes into producing good quality beef. Like you said, raising it at the right time of the year, producing it at the right, at the right time of the year, in sync with the grasses. I love the fact of in sync with nature too, right? You're not working against nature's natural rhythms. And I think the people that are listening to this that have interest in what you're producing and what I'm going to be producing, these they're looking for more of a natural approach trying to stay in rhythm with nature and so i think the idea that we're trying to run a system that does that i think that would appeal even as much as 
just the concept of grass fed because this allows us to truly stay grass fed in Absolutely. what we're doing with the animals. Yep. Yeah. Very much so. And, and uh, going back to like where we're grass farmers instead of uh, beef producers, so to speak, you know, our ultimate goal is to have more meat underground than we have on top of the ground with our earthworms right. uh, and stuff like that. And so it, it's just, we're just awakening the soil and it's literally the cattle are just going through there and they're just massaging it. So it's just like us going and getting a deep tissue massage. Right. Right. We're, we're waking the ground up. And I think probably, you know, something that always resonates with me on that. I think about from my clinical experience and I have so much conversation with individuals about their gut health and the, the microbiota and the microbiome in the gut. Well, there's a microbiota and a microbiome in the soil too. Absolutely. And when we're running cattle and we're running it in the way you and I do, we're nourishing those microbiota there too. And yep. we're getting benefit back from those guys. Also. Absolutely. It's, it's just a, it's a pure, just like your water cycle. It's just, a, it's a, it's a cycle, uh, a life cycle. And, uh, the plants can do without soil, but the soil cannot do without plants. Right. And so once you get all that stuff going in the soil and you wake everything up, it just, it literally just kind of explodes and uh, it's really cool to see. And, uh, it's really, very rewarding to see the effect that the cattle have in that system. Right, right. Well, guys, as you can tell, Doug and I could sit here and chat about this stuff all day long and probably bore you to no end with details that really maybe at the end of the day, you're just more interested in what what are you doing with your beef? How are you producing your beef? What's your end product? That's We understand that's what you're interested in. So we, we won't numb you with all the details of, of the things that we enjoy seeing with the cattle, but we did want to share with you exactly how we do this and also really clear up a misconception about longhorns in general and why they can be such a great option as a beef cattle and why that may be something that you would want to seek out. I wanted to share with you, if you're in the Dallas, Corsicana, Northern Texas area, check out Trail of Faith Ranch. These guys are doing great things and they're doing it with not just cattle. So there's other things that they're doing. If you're down in the Southeast Texas, around the Houston region, Harvest Hills Ranch. We love showing individuals how food is produced, ways it can be produced, and honestly, just trying to buck the conventional thought process about what is essential and what's not essential in terms of food production and just really trying to show a different perspective overall. So if you like this information, make sure you share it with someone else who you think could benefit from this and check out Trail of Faith Ranch on the internet as well as Harvest Hills Ranch. Thanks for joining in today, guys. We look forward to seeing you in the very near future. Dr. Arland Hill with Mr. Doug Winters.